In the second part of this texturing tutorial, we are going to edit the UV we already made on the first part. So if you don't have any, go make it first and then come back. This is all about tweaking. Tweaking, for example, with proportional editing tools. They work exactly the same as they do in the 3D view. They work with the O key. You enable, then you move with the scroll wheel, you change the, uh, or plus or minus, you change the area of influence, nothing new. What is new is a great way to unwrap, but in real time. This option is called Live Unwrap, enabled from the menu. At first, it doesn't seem to change anything. This is because it works with pinning vertices. How do you pin a vertex? You just press P with the vertex selected and that's it. Now the vertex is red. For these to actually work, you need at least two vertices and then move one of them with G. Whoa. Nice. It's fun. Um, what you see is unwrapping in real time. Let's do it with something more useful, like uh, the legs, for example. Let's um, select. Let's spin the legs so they don't move, but the rest of the body recalculates as we uh, move these pin points. Press P to add pins and then move any of the pin points. And as you can see, Blender recalculates and unwraps in real time as you move the vertices, which is really cool. For example, let's add one vertex in the back so we can pull it that way. Press P, then move to the back. As you can see, the deformation is relative to the rest of the faces, so it's, it works perfect. And it's not going to mess with the rest of your UV. That's really cool, too. If your UV doesn't have any pin, then it will not touch it. It only cares about the pinned island. So you just select some vertices, press P and move, and that way you can resize, rescale your mesh. Very nice. Now you can go and like stretch your mesh. and make use of the stretch option in the display like I'm doing right now so you can see because maybe it looks okay in there but if it's not blue then it means that something's wrong or it's a bit stretched so the closer it gets to red so if it's like green and yellow and then red then it means it's a face that is getting really stretched if it's only blue and a bit of green, then it's all right. We'll see this in detail now. So for example, the ears, I'm not going to add pins there, either in the tongue or in the feet, the hoof. Just only going to tweak the body and that's it. Let's leave it like this. Let's disable that. And now let's try another tool. For example, let's go, uh, there is one part here in the face that it's overlapping and we know overlapping is not good at all. So let's see, how do I know which face this belongs to in the actual model? Well, if you enable the sync option in the header of the UV editor, that little cube with a, then the selection you do in the 3D view is going to be selected in the UV editor and vice versa. So for example, if you don't know which face it belongs to, you should select it on the UV editor and then, then press dot from the numpad in the 3D view so you can move your view to that face. And then, for example, that one looks yellow in the UV editor, so it looks stretched, but then if you actually look at it in the 3D view, it's a face that you don't really see. So 
you don't really care about that. It's okay that it's a stretch because it, it's a, it's hidden. It's a uh, special part of our character. So for example, that part is inside the nose, so I could just not do anything, but let's use it as an excuse to introduce this other tool. U sculpt. This is a rather new option in Blender, not a lot, not a lot of versions ago. It works basically like the sculpt mode in the 3D view. Yeah, you have a brush, you can change the size with F, change the strength with Shift F. By default, it's in grab, so you just click and grab your vertices around. It's pretty organic, it's really nice way to edit big chunks of vertices and it has some cool options by default it has the option lock borders enabled so when you edit it's not going to move the border which is great because so most of the time you don't want it you spend a lot of time tweaking in life unwrap to have the perfect borders and then you don't want to mess with that or for example the other option which is uh, sculpt all islands which is on by default it means that whenever that's off, Blender will take the point where you first clicked to transform as the island that is going to be affected. So it will not go across all the islands under the mouse, but only on the first one you clicked on. So it could just move, or we could just try the other option to smooth this, or actually relax. I don't know the difference exactly of, of the term, but here it's called relax. So it's a click, and as you can see, it relaxes <laughs> all the vertices, yeah. Basically what it does, it tries to give an even area to all the faces, for example. It moves all the vertices so they are arranged nicely. But why are we getting all these colors? Well, because in the 3D view, they have a certain size and they have they should have the same proportions in the UV editor. So even though it looks nicer, the way it Relax does it, it is not meant for meshes like this where you have faces with really different sizes and proportions. But it works really well. And the opposite would be Pinch. The pinch option is also here, like in the 3D view sculpt mode. And it does basically the same. It just tries to pull the vertices together in a nice way. And it works really well with the sculpt all islands tool, for example. And again, like in the 3D view, here you can change to the smooth or relax tool by hitting shift at any time with any brush. Hold shift, click, and then you'll smooth. So it's a really cool tool to have and try. Now let's go with this other option that is also really nice and it's been in Blender since not long ago. This new tool is called Stitch, UV Stitching. The shortcut for it is V, And the best way to try to find out what it does is just click one vertex and then press V. Click in, in one vertex in one border, for example, and then V. The vertex will get green and another, and another vertex will appear in another part of the mesh. How come? What's that? Let's remove the image and remove stretch so we can see it better. And what it does, it basically detects to which vertex it connects in the actual model, that one. So you can stitch them together. For example, if I select all that and press V, Blender shows in blue, like the ghost mesh of how it would connect over there, which is very nice. This is a model option. So once you are in the stitch mode, you can press other shortcuts to enable or disable some other tools. For example, by default the snap option is on, which means it's going to move either island, the one you actually selected, it's going to move it on the corresponding vertices. 
and if you disable this with S, it is going to connect the vertices but not move any of the islands. If you press M, Blender will stitch them both halfway from each other, like in the middle. If you press I, you can choose which island you want to move, like for, for example here the tongue to the palette or the palette to the tongue. Or meet them halfway with M. Or disable snapping at all with S. So this works in the vertices you selected. Yes. But if you want to see how it will look with less vertices, for example, you can limit this by pressing L and then holding Alt and then scroll wheel to increase or decrease the number of vertices that are going to be stitched. While in stitch mode, you can shift click vertices and see how they stitch. And as you can see, it preserved the pin points, so it wouldn't mess with your current UV. So now, what do you do with this great, brilliant, well tweaked? So now, what do you? So now, what do you do with this great, awesome UV that you just made? Um, Well, you can paint your own you can paint your own texture right here like we are going to do in the next tutorial or you could export this layout and use it in another software like GIMP or Photoshop, Krita, whatever. Let's export it. Let's select all the faces, then click on UV and then at the very top there is a an option called export UV layout. You name it, then in the left panel you can see some options like uh, all UVs, in case you didn't select all the UVs and you want to export all of them, and the modifier option if you want to export with the modified mesh, like for example with subsurf level, whatever, which I don't recommend, I prefer to have it without the modified mesh. Format, size, and fill opacity in case you want it to have in case you want to have the faces filled or just a pure wireframe only. Export. And this is how it looks. It has a little bit of filling in the faces and then black wireframes. And a bit of overlapping eek. This is if you want to paint in an external program, but if you want to do it in Blender, then just keep watching for the next part, which is going to explain the texturing in Blender.